This is YPHR, the radio home of your Youngstown Phantoms. And now it's time for Inside the Glass, the official Youngstown Phantoms radio show. Here's your host, Sean Stewart, and voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack. Welcome to episode 16 of Inside the Glass, the weekly Youngstown Phantoms podcast. This is Voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack, and I am joined by my partner in crime, Sean Stewart. Sean, after a long hiatus, it's good to be back in the booth with you, bud. It is. It's, uh, it was a little bit, uh, little bit long. Uh, schoolwork kind of took some precedence in the uh, recent years. Senior paper is done and completed, though, and graduation is uh, in my sights. Th- there's a light at the end of the tunnel? There is. There I- is. Have you started a countdown on Facebook yet? Uh, I have not. I guess that's the uh, the next thing to make it official is to do a Facebook countdown, right? As I was looking through my, you know, this day in uh, your Facebook history, um, it, it is taking me back, gosh, eight years <laughs> to the, uh, the spring of 2009 when I was getting to graduate from our alma mater, Fair YSU, and... Yeah, it, I think today was actually 69 days until my uh, my graduation. I was just getting ready to head to Milwaukee for the uh, Horizon League Women's Basketball Tournament. Uh, well, uh, the men's basketball team was playing in uh, Detroit this past weekend and made it all the way to the semis before falling to... Um, Eventual champion Northern Kentucky. Yeah, Northern Kentucky, that's right. And Northern uh, Kentucky, they've only been D1, what? Less than five years. It's been the last couple of seasons. I think this is their second or third season in the Horizon League. Well, they've been in the Horizon League ever since they joined D1. So I guess it would only been, you know, three years, four years max. So, yeah, I mean, congratulations to the Northern Kentucky Vikings, is it? Norse. Norse, the Norse, that's right. All of the, They have all the Viking of, of fair and paraphernalia, but they are the Norse. You are correct. Well, let's get back to the matter at hand, recapping the weekend that was for the Youngstown Phantoms, and it got off to a great start on Friday night, really, as the hated Muskegon Lumberjacks are in town. And a sh- shout-out to my man Larry Snyder with a boo, Lumberjacks, boo. All right, let's go ahead and get to the recap of the game. There was no scoring in the first period. And at the 16-17 mark of the second period, Chase Greesock got the Phantoms on the board. Zito, but he's able to get the puck ahead to Van Wy. Van Wy one-touches it into his own zone, picked up there by Mahal. Mahal trying to get it ahead to Eric Esposito, but Butte got in the way of that. Tommy Apat picks it up. There's for Chase Greesock. Greesock dumps it around. He's going. It goes in. Chase Greesock just threw one into the mouth of the crease, and Jack McNeely actually ended up poking it into his own net. The Phantoms have scored. Goal's going to be credited to Chase Greesock. That'll be his 10th of the season. And the Phantoms have a one nothing lead. Assist to Tommy Apap and Eric Esposito. And the Phantoms have a one nothing lead. 28 seconds later, Alex Esposito would double the Phantoms lead after he stole a pass at center ice from former Phantom Ty Farmer. He was looking for Gilling once more, but that's taken away by Gingel. Gingel able to get the puck back in the neutral zone. And McNeely will retreat for it once more. Actually, it's going to be Ty Farmer, the first one to the puck. Farmer snaps one ahead, but it's taken away by Alex Esposito. Esposito enters the zone. Takes a shot. Save under his goal, and it goes in! Alex Esposito! Boom, shaka laka laka boom! His 13th goal of the season. Time of that goal, 16-44. And Esposito continues his lumberjack killing ways in eight games against Muskegon this year. That is six goals for Alex Esposito. And the Phantoms now have a 2 nothing lead. Goals on back-to-back shots for the Phantoms. 13th goal of the year for A. Espo. Unassisted at 16:44 to give the Phantoms a 2 nothing lead. The Phantoms would hold on to that 2 nothing lead until the 18:40 mark of the third period when Austin Pulley would fire into the empty net for his team leading 18th goal of the season. Albrecht sends it off the near side wall, Gilling knocks it into the Youngstown end. Albrecht gets to it first on the end wall, but Dockery gets there, knocks it ahead to Cole North. North to Pulley. Pulley enters the zone, takes a shot at the empty net, he scores! Austin Pulley with his team leading 18th goal of the year, gives Youngstown a 3 nothing lead. Time of that goal, 1840. 
Assist to Cole Norris and Dominic Dockery on Austin's empty netter. And the Phantoms would prevail over the Muskegon Lumberjacks and momentarily leapfrog them into third place in the USHL's Eastern Conference with 61 points. Taking the loss for Muskegon was Adam Brisgala. He stopped 18 of 20 shots. Getting the win for the Phantoms and his third shutout of the season was Ivan Kublikov, who stopped all 29 pieces of vulcanized rubber sent his way. Three stars on the night. Third star was Alex Esposito. Second star was Chase Greesock. And the first star was Ivan Kublikov. And, Sean, I know you only got to see the third period on Friday night, but, you know, that was a whale of a game that Youngstown played. It was, and from what I saw... It Phantoms dominated in all aspects of the game, whether it was the penalty kill, whether it was just holding on to that league, and even their offensive zone presence was pretty outstanding even in that third period as they held on to that 3 nothing lead. But Saturday uh, was not so much the same way, was it? It, it, it was indeed, uh, as the, the title of the book was, The Tale of Two Cities. This was a tale of two games, and before we get to the Saturday night recap we want to remind you that this opening segment of this week's inside the glass is brought to you by our friends at the air force reserve i started my adventure in the air force reserve as a payload system a operator. flight medic in the air force reserve I'm a pilot for the air force thunderbirds demonstration team. we do a lot in a little bit of time and we have to do it very efficiently it's a very exciting career the reserve gave me the opportunity to learn something totally different from what i did the training in the air force reserve is second to none the most exciting thing in the air force reserve is to be able to travel it gave me the opportunity to go to college that was definitely a bonus and the air force reserve gave me all those opportunities and then even more start your adventure and we're back sean go ahead and take it away with the recap of yeah yeah just go <laughs> ahead this one was definitely a rough game as the phantoms fell to the muskegon lumberjacks 5-1 in the second game of the two game series and a familiar face would get the first goal of the game ty farmer getting his second of the season at 115 of the first assisted by michael hockerainen and keegan howdeshell and colin adams would net the eventual game winner at 942 of the first for his 22nd of the year assisted by casey gilling and the Lumberjacks would go up 3-0 as Michael Hakkarainen would get his second point of the evening at 12.52 of the first. Helper on the Hakkarainen goal went to Anthony Delgaizo, and after the three goals, Ivan Kublikov would get some relief from Britt League. But it would not really help out in this case as Andrzej Sveshnikov would get his 23rd of the season at 19.27, assisted by Austin Albrecht and Mark Delgaizo. And so, so the Lumberjacks would take that 4-0 lead into the first intermission. And in the second, Curtis Hall would get the Phantoms on the board with his 7th of the season. UPMC Sports Medicine, a proud sponsor of the Youngstown Phantoms. This is Voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack, and you're listening to YPHR, Youngstown Phantoms Hockey Radio. Welcome back inside the Cavelli Center where the Phantoms have just scored. Curtis Hall able to pop one up over the shoulder of Keith Petrozelli, and the Phantoms are on the board. Helpers on the Hall goal came from Marshall Moyes and Brandon Estes, and that was at 544 of the second. But Andrei Sveshnikov would put the dagger in the coffin at 10.02 of the third to put the Lumberjacks up 5-1. to one, And that was Sveshnikov's 24th of the season. Helpers on that goal went to Austin Alger and Austin Albrecht. Keith Petrozelli would come away with the win, stopping all but one of the Phantom shots, 29 of 30 on the night. And Ivan Kublikov would take the loss, stopping 7 of 10. And in relief, Britt League would stop 11 of 13 shots. Three stars of the game. Keith Precizelli coming away with the third. Second star of the night went to Colin Adams. And your first first star of the night with two goals was Andrei Shvechnikov. Well, Sean, it was nice to see Britt League get back in net uh, after having been injured in the game. Oh, not even in a game, in morning warm-ups when the fans went to Dubuque in late January. Uh, that was Britt's first game actually since... January the 6th, when he also replaced Ivan in a game against the Lumberjacks. This one was up in Muskegon. Uh, Ivan was pulled early in the third after he gave up his fifth goal. And the Lumberjacks ended up winning that game 6-3. to three. And, you know, even it's been, what, probably a month, almost clo probably close to two months that we haven't seen Britt in, in action. But for the most part, I didn't see really much rust on uh, 
No, Britt looked like sharp. There. Britt looked sharp. Um, 21 straight starts for Ivan Kubikov, and I, re- I don't see him coming out of net anytime soon, that's for sure, as he still looks as sharp here on game 21 as he did back on game, say, you know, five back in the middle of uh, January. Yeah, it was just, I think it was just a couple of uh, tough breaks, a couple of uh, puck luck option opportunities for the Lumberjacks that didn't go Ivan's way, and uh, unfortunately that's sometimes how hockey works, and the hockey gods just did not have Ivan in favor that night. Well, I, I know if you if you talk to, uh, when we talk to the Phantoms head coach Brad Patterson a little later in the show, he'll probably tell you that at least the second goal shouldn't have happened because in an even strength situation when Colin Adams gets loose on the back door, uh, that, that can't happen. Colin Adams one of the better scorers for Muskegon. So a couple of defensive lapses for sure. And uh, Brad even said in his postgame quotes, you know, this one's not on Ivan Kublikov. We just didn't have it tonight. Yeah, when you're down a defenseman uh, with, with Ruggiero getting ejected in that game, it was a little bit difficult. Uh, defenseman may have been a little bit tired towards the end of that one, just kind of having to rotate um, with one less. Well, that'll wrap up this first and opening segment of episode 16 of Inside the Glass. Head coach Brad Patterson will be joining us in the next segment, so go ahead and click over to that. And thank you very much to our friends at the Air Force Reserve for sponsoring this segment.